Uh, that's Thunder Bay Island out ahead. Uh, yeah, we're uh, going to be working on the um, limestone bedding plains exposed along the southern part of the island. That's where the coral reef and sponge reef uh, is exposed. We started off working with uh, doing botanical studies and taking scientists and putting them off on islands on the Great Lakes. Uh, and this was our first introduction into doing scientific work with, with universities. On the southern uh, end of Thunder Bay Island, there are these extensive bedding plane exposures, limestone layers, and uh, they go for hundreds and hundreds of meters. And popping up out of them are coral heads and uh, the tops of giant sponges called stromatoporoids that were the main reef building organisms during Middle Paleozoic era. It literally is like walking across an old sea floor. We worked with Dr. Doug Hunter at Oakland University uh, doing zebra mussel studies. That study led into working on drowned forest in Lower Lake Huron. From the drowned forest project, we we really evolved into studying ancient shorelines. It's very interesting because there are joints running through the rocks, fractures. So as ice has moved over these surfaces, it sometimes has plucked up parts of the limestone bedding, uh, whereas in other places it's left it intact. So in essence, what you've got is the exhumed seafloor. I kind of make the analogy that it would be like um, draining the waters off the Bahama platform and then taking eight or nine foot slices and at right angles through the materials. Yep, I'm going to be the diver who uh, goes down and uh, measures the section uh, as it goes down and, and try and relate the rock units there and just verify that they are indeed what we think we're looking at uh, in the, uh, the rock quarry. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, Rick Rock, the uh, geologist from Wayne State University, and I, uh, we're going to go out there and GPS locate all of the little patch reefs and make a GIS map of the southern end of the island showing the spatial distribution of these various features, you know, these patch reefs and such. And then we'll put this map as an educational tool online. You'll be able to click the points and actually come up with the feature on the island. The other thing we'd like to do is dive a little on the escarpment leading up to those bedding plains uh, to confirm our correlations uh, with rocks here on the mainland. Last year's work, which is very similar to this, we were working on an ancient channel in the Straits of Mackinac, and we've documented an underwater waterfall that was drowned. It's at about 110 feet, dropping off to about 200 uh, feet right off Mackinac Island. On well, this particular trip, we're working on a land bridge that crosses from uh, Alpena and goes to uh, Ontario. So it, it, 10,000 years ago, you could have walked from Alpena over to uh, Ambury, Ontario. Well, again, mainly it's it's educational. That's that's the real key to this is is to understand the geology of Michigan, to be able to relate these units together, and really see a larger picture of of what's going on right underneath our feet and the the amazing history that that's all around us right here in Michigan. We came out here, and the divers really enjoyed working along uh, that area last summer, they were actually finding corals and bringing them onto the surface. You know.